Hi, my dear Jessica Tau aficionados. Sandra Sherman here. Greetings from Austria. In this jazz guitar lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to apply everything you may already know about Dorian over other chords than its native minor chord. I'll explain the theory behind this concept and we'll apply it on some licks. I've made tabs for those licks, which you can download from one of the links down below in the description box. All right, let's dig right in. Now here's how it works. As jazzers, we'll learn a lot of Dorian lines over the years, so why not use them for other compatible chords? Now here's a quick summary on the chords in a major scale. When there's a D minor chord in a song part that's in the key of C, we play the C major scale and focus on the chord tones of the D minor 7 chord. That's called the D Dorian scale, because the second degree of a scale is called Dorian. The point is that you focus on the chord tones of the D minor 7 chord. Now the interesting thing is that most things we focus on when playing over the second degree of the scale also fit over other degrees. That's because they share most of the chord tones. Now here's the trick. Play everything you already know about Dorian, and i show you some nice Dorian lines today as well, over the four, five and seven chords of that same scale. So let's check that out on guitar. We have a B half diminished on the seventh degree of the C major scale. And I told you before, this is compatible, seventh degree is compatible with the second degree. They're kind of interchangeable. If I look at the chords alone, I see that already. B half diminished, seven, 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 six, shares these tones with a D minor chord, a regular D minor triad chord. These chords are the same, our tones are the same. <clears throat> now, the arpeggio tone of a B half diminished, uh, and that would be the ideal situation to solo, to focus over, B, D, F, A. We don't want to learn B Locrian. Well, we could, but why not use the trick and just play D Dorian? We already have these three in common. D, F, A is the first part of the D minor seven arpeggio, and then we have C. D, F, A, C, while the B half diminished has B, D, F, A. So, compared to the B, what do we get in relation to the B half diminished? When I play a D minor 7 arpeggio, when I just keep on thinking Dorian, I get the 7th of the B, the flat 5th of the B, the se oh, that was the 3rd, I'm sorry, the 3rd of the B, the flat 5th, the seventh of the B and the flat ninth. So I lose the root, but the bass plays the root, and I gain the flat ninth. This is called a superimposition, by the way. I, I do have a video up on superimpositions, but this video is a bit different. It's not exactly superimpositions. Now you can play what you already know about Dorian, all the licks, and let me show you one lick now and I played against a D minor seven chord first, so the bass, uh, the, the kind of the home chord, the native chord, and then the second four bars, bars number three and four, are play, played over a B half diminished. So you hear the difference, all right? Now the same can be done with the fifth degree of a scale, in this case G7. Playing a D minor 7 arpeggio against the G7 chord gives us a G9-11 overall sound. We have to be a bit careful though with that 11th, not, uh, I recommend you not to land on it. But if you just want to quickly play uh, over 
a G7 chord and not learn all the mixolydian stuff, D Dorian is good enough. Let's check this out. We have our D minor 7 arpeggio and compared to, to, to the G7, all right, we already see some D minor 7, G7. We see some mutual tones already. So G7 would be G, B, D, F. And D minor is D, F, A, C. So D and F, they share it. And A and C, A is the ninth, and C is the eleventh. So again, I recommend you not to land on the C though. All right, again, I'll play a D minor seven arpeggio lick for you, a different one now. You have it in the tabs, which you can download. And um, the first two bars are D minor seven. The second two bars, I play the same lick over G seven. So it's always, we always switch and you can hear what it sounds like. also works over the fourth degree of the scale that's the F major 7 chord and if you play continue to play in D Dorian what do you get D major 7 arpeggio we know it already and the F major 7 arpeggio is actually F A C E so F A C are shared and instead of D we have an E all right now, uh, this spells an F6 arpeggio it's because when I play the D minor 7, we have the 6th of the F, the root, the 3rd, and the 5th. All right, so this is perfectly comp compatible, and of course, all the other uh, scale tones are too. All right, let's listen again. We have now the third lick and I play over D minor first and then over F major seven. Let's listen to this. summarize this you can use everything you've already learned for Dorian over the fourth the fifth and the seventh degree of a scale as well these modes are compatible they're interchangeable and you can use one over the other because it also works vice versa you can use any let's say G mixolydian lick that's the fifth degree of the scale labeled as G mixolydian and played over a D Dorian uh, chord, over a D minor 7 chord. You can play every lick you ever learned about uh, on uh, B half diminished, the 7th degree, that's Locrian, would be a Locrian lick. You can play it over D Dorian too, over the D minor 7 chord. This is all interchangeable. It's maybe not totally perfect because there's always one or sometimes in Mixolydian there are two notes that are not fitting perfectly well, but people do it all the time. So it's, it's totally okay to do that and it makes things a lot easier. Jazz is complicated enough. Why make it even more complicated? All right. I hope you like this video. I have, uh, please check out all my other Dorian licks so you um, expand your licks, lick library. Check out all my other Dorian lick lessons. I have plenty up here on my YouTube channel. I hope you like this video. Please give it a fat thumbs up. I see you next week. Servus, Papa.